field goal now. Touchdown, Cooper! That was Demarcus Lawrence. They can't stop him. Keep hitting him in the mouth. Keep hitting him in the mouth. They can't stop him. Keeps his foot to the 10. Touchdown, Elliott. Gallup leaping. Touchdown! Dallas Cowboys Game Night is presented by AT&T. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. It's another week and another hard fought game for the Dallas Cowboys. This time they're on the losing end. 38 31, the final score from CenturyLink Field in Seattle as the Cowboys fall to 1 and 2 on the 2020 season. Hello, everybody. Welcome into Cowboys Game Night. Kyle Yeomans alongside the Pro Bowler, Mr. Nate Newton, former Dallas Cowboys. And really, when you talk about the Cowboys, there's nothing dull whenever it comes yeah. to Cowboys Nation. You can't just get blown out or yeah. you can't just win a game handily. It's got to be close and it's got to be controversial. And there's definitely things to work on on both sides of the football. But ultimately, Nate, this is another great game. And the Cowboys just couldn't make those key plays down the stretch this time around. I uh, know they couldn't, man. It started with the defense. I mean, you can't spot a team uh, uh, 23 points, or you can't give them – you had a muff kick, and all of a sudden you, you're looking at a situation where you're down two. Then you have an interception. That's nine points you're down. And before you know it, you got your safeties looking in the backfield. You got Xavier Woods. You got uh, Darian Thomas. They looking in the backfield instead of understanding that those crossing routes are for guys underneath. And you got guys streaking behind you in a cover two. Well, you did, when you're in a cover two, you got two safeties back. You got to be deeper than the deepest man. Yeah. So you gave up a couple of plays there. And all of a sudden, they, they picking on your rookie, uh, Trayvon Diggs. He's struggling a little bit, but he's found a little hope when he came and batted the ball out. But you down at half, 23-15. That is offensively, defense, and special teams. You got to send your defense into a mad scramble that early into the game. Well, let's break this down a little bit. There's a lot to unpack whenever you talk about this game overall from a defensive standpoint. You mentioned getting spotted yards. The offense early just didn't necessarily put the defense in a necessary spot to have right. some success. They had their backs against the wall. The pass rush was there, something that was much better from a Cowboys perspective. Four sacks today. They came into the game with just two the first two weeks of the season, and you get to see that with Alden Smith. He ended up with three on his own. You know what? They did a great job of, 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 of putting an umbrella around this kid there uh, as the game went on. They didn't let him break contain a lot of times. They put pressure on him. They, they kept him moving around. They did not let him sit on the spot like he did in the first half. Yeah, he did sit and it really still ended up with a great game. Russell Wilson with five touchdown passes for back to back games. First time in Seattle history that that's happened. And it's the first time that Ben Roth or since Ben Roethlisberger did it a couple years years ago so it's been quite some time but you see really he wasn't comfortable it wasn't no. a comfortable game for Russell Wilson and that's something you wanted the Cowboys to instill upon that that pressure and, and really what they the at least the the bad side of, of Russell Wilson it's kind of tough to say because it wasn't a bad side right right it was something that Russell had to work on but whenever you look at the secondary they still struggled when it came to slowing down those wide receivers oh they did man one-on-one -on -one, uh, DK Metcalf is one of the speedier guys you got Lockett who's a sub uh, four for a guy and they kept what our safeties did was kept looking in the backfield and when they did that right there that allowed uh, these guys to get behind them. Like I said, we, it was in too deep coverage. But right there you see Antoine Wood. He fight through, gets his hands on him, and that's what you can't do. You can't miss. You look at these stats here, man. He, that is what Russell Wilson does. Zero interceptions. <laughs> Only one fumble. Only four sacks. I mean, you have to uh, keep this guy moving around a lot. And he was moving around. And whenever you talk about some of the best quarterbacks at taking care of the football and getting the job done in a gritty game against the defense, that's what Russell Wilson did today. Only a couple quarterbacks can do that in the entire NFL. He's one of them. And it took every single bit of those yardage and the key plays for Seattle to win this game. When we come back, we'll look on the offensive side of the football. What did the Cowboys do wrong, even though they put up 500-plus total yards? When we come back here on Cowboys Game Night. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. 
the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket from the Texas Lottery is your ticket for a chance to win up to $100,000. Get your Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. Must be 18 or older to purchase a ticket. Play responsibly. 472 yards through the air for the Dallas Cowboys. 522 total in their 31 or 38 31 loss to the Seattle Seahawks. Welcome back in to Cowboys game night. Kyle Yeomans, Nate Newton. And Nate, when you look at Dak Prescott, another great game where you put up the yardage, you had three touchdown passes, but taking care of the football was kind of tough for him today. Plus, he had to throw the ball 57 times. You know, when you're throwing the ball 57 times, you know that you're playing from behind. But more importantly, when you're throwing the ball 57 times, you have to protect the ball. We came out, got an interception in the first half. We came out, got an interception in the second half. Those led to points, and that hurts your, hurts your defense. And, you know, I understand you're trying to get it out to Zeke. You're trying to get back in the game, but you have to protect that football. We didn't do a very good job of that. Now, we found Cedric Wilson today, if I'm pronouncing the name <laughs> right. Uh, we found Noah Brown. I mean, you passed the ball around, but those two turnovers was the difference maker in you winning and losing this game. Yeah, put up a couple points up on the board and really put your defense in a tough situation like we talked about earlier. But you mentioned Cedric Wilson, also Michael Gallup. He ends up with six receptions, 138 yards. Second week in a row, you've seen back-to-back 100-yard -back receivers, and you know you've got some weapons when it's two different receivers right. than you saw last week. Yeah, and, but you have to win. Quarterbacks and head coaches get judged off of one thing, that's wins. Uh, and, and we throwing too much. I mean, don't get me wrong, we had to go up into Seattle and match them score for score because when we got behind, got behind, we knew we was going to have to throw the ball. But we have to uh, have a more, little bit more balanced attack. We even have to go with a few more screams, even though they were on us today for us to scream. Zeke has to be a little bit better in catching the ball coming out of the backfield. He said that himself. He said he has to tighten up and focus up because he had a few drops that if he had caught the ball, he could have had big yardage out in front of him. And we will hear from Ezekiel Elliott later in the show, but he had six receptions on 12 targets for 24 right. yards. They tried to get him involved in the passing game, but that was really because he was shut down on the ground, Nate. Uh, yeah, they was not going to let Zeke run, man. <laughs> Ken Norton, he, he's a linebacker. He's not going to let him run. So they tried getting him the ball, but like I say, early in the game, he dropped a few. A few it, it was big yardage out there in front of him. So what we got to do is we got to tighten up as an offense. We got to be more consistent because for two weeks in a row, we have put our defense in scramble mode. And it takes a while when you're playing against a, a, a Russell Wilson or Matt Ryan to get your defense settled down. And it took, once again, second half, they played better. Fourth quarter, they played better, but you're down. And you're playing from a, from a hustle type move, and that doesn't work well in the NFL. You mentioned it. Playing down usually results in more passing attempts. Yes. See, just one of the most wild plays of the night. Michael Gallup somehow came up with that football, put really the offense in a, a tough situation late, having to, to find a rhythm yes. through the air. 57 passing attempts. That's the most in Dak Prescott's career to this point, and only the third time he's gone over 51 and two now in such games. But you see the, some of the numbers and really the unbalanced attack when it comes to passing the football versus putting it on the ground. They just didn't have any success in that regard. Third down's much better, seven of 15. Mike McCarthy was pretty happy about that. We'll hear from the head ball coach when we come back as Cowboys game night continues following the 38. 31 loss up in Seattle. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. The Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket from the Texas Lottery is your ticket for a chance to win up to $100,000. Get your Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. Must be 18 or older to purchase a ticket. Play responsibly. This segment is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It was the eighth time in each of their careers that Pete Carroll and Mike McCarthy have met in a battle of former Super Bowl head coaches. Mike McCarthy on the losing side of this one, 38-31. Here's what he had to say after the game. Mike, can you tell us about that last sequence there when you're in a position potentially tie it with 25 seconds left and and just the, the offensive plays and, and what didn't connect for you at that time? Well, I mean, they were playing, you know, pure zone coverage, um, you know, and, and really just trying to get it done with the pass rush. And, you know, obviously at the beginning of the, 
drive we were able to get down there you know cleanly but uh you know it just uh you know the pr protection wise Dak Dak had had to move his feet on a couple a uh, couple uh plays there you know and it came down to the you know really he made a, a tremendous play staying on his feet uh you know for the last play to get the ball thrown in, into the end zone so um just you know execution uh, particularly playing a little uphill that at that spot but we had you know we had the three timeouts um you know we'll be better next time for it I was part of it. Uh, part part of it was self scout and just you know something that we felt we could do more of. Um, you know, I, I thought for the most part we did a great job keeping them in the pocket. I, I thought the, the challenge of circuit, the second reaction rush was was a bit challenging. Um, just you know the, the way the play was extended extended in a way they were able to hold on to us and extend those plays even when um, we did a great job keeping them in the pocket. So I thought it was a good plan. You mentioned the turnover ratio. Can, can you talk about the, the turnover at the, the end of the first half and then the turnover to, to come out to start the third quarter and just what that did to the dynamic of the game at that point? Well, I mean, the one before the half is, you know, you're, you're always you're looking to go in and get a score going in and score coming out. It's always a huge momentum opportunity as a football team. It's a that's part of why we def that's part of the equation why we defer in the coin coin toss. So I mean, it, to me, it is you know everybody's known for something, and, and we will always start and stop with the ability to take care of the football and take it away. And we haven't gotten that done the last two weeks, and uh, we will we, we will need to change that quickly. Uh, where we're going to be into these battles each week, it's it's difficult to overcome overcome turnovers. So, uh, but yeah, I, I would say the one before the half that you know the route was undercut, and you know then the you know it wanted to start the half. You know it looked like we had a protection issue there. Obviously a little bit of disappointment there for Mike McCarthy as his Cowboys fall to one and two. But Nate, when you're talking about taking care of the football, especially at the end of the first half and the start of the third quarter, that didn't work out for the Cowboys. And it was really a turning point in this game. If you go back and look at the Cowboys first half scoring, it's basically none. Mm -hmm. You look at Seattle, they score in the first and they score in the third. So they knew that this, that they had to not turn the ball over. What do we do? We come out, we muff up, we muff a kick. All of a sudden, we get a, a, a two-point deal in the end zone. All of a sudden, we punting it. We 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 punting the ball to them on, on a kick, and all of a sudden, our quarterback throws an interception. It turns into seven points. You come out in the third quarter, strip, sack. It turns into 14 points. You, that's too much, man. Yeah, and it ended up putting you down by 15. They made a comeback, but the Cowboys fall in Seattle. We'll be back with more here on Cowboys Game Night. This segment was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It was a disappointing day for Ezekiel Elliott. Only finished with 34 yards on the ground, 24 through the air. Here's what the running back had to say following the loss to Seattle. Hey, Z, can you just um, elaborate on, on the adjustments you all made on the second half that uh, allowed the offense to, to get going a little bit better? Uh, we knew that, that they were, uh, their main goal was to stop the run. So, I mean, just second half, we got in, uh, in the locker room and just uh, knew we had to throw them out of it. So we came out slinging it. Seems like... Uh, I mean, it seemed like screen passes were a big part of the game plan. What did y'all see that, that led y'all wanted to try that, and, and what were they doing to limit them so much? Um, well, you know, they're a team that presses a lot, so screens uh, screens is uh, normally a good a good option. Um, but uh, they were good to um, they were good at sniffing out the screens and uh, making plays on them. Uh, one prior to one, I one we probably had the most room on. I, I dropped that one, so I gotta focus up, make a better better play, and finish that. But uh, yeah. One of the biggest reasons that Ezekiel Elliott was really utilized or tried to be utilized in the passing game was because he couldn't really get any kind of movement on the ground, but he didn't necessarily have success through the air as well. You know, with two weeks in a row, we've seen 
the uncharacteristic uh, of Zeke. Zeke don't put the ball on the ground, and he normally catch balls coming out of the, out of the backfield. He's a great screen runner. But these uh, last few games, he's not been uh, locked in, uh, catching the ball as well as he should. So I think he's going to be working on that this week in practice. I think it is something that he's absolutely got to work on. And is it any really r real reason to panic on Ezekiel Elliott? He still had 100-plus no, yards no. in each of the first. He's still one of the top backs in the league, man. This dude is a bulldog. He'll, 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 he'll right himself. No doubt about it. One player who did have a 100-yard game today was Michael Gallup. And here's what he had to say following the game. Michael, can you start by talking about that, uh, the, the big catch you made down the sidelines to, to get you back into the game late? Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of seeming like that's, uh, that's the big play we need at the time. So, uh, I mean, just a straight nine ball, nothing to it. Uh, Dak knew that he was coming to me before the play, so I uh, got to make him right. Get last week, but this one you, you can't make the plays at the end. Is that just the way this thing kind of goes in the NFL? Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's not even really just like the last plays of the game. Uh, I mean, we had some plays that we would love to have back early on. Uh, obviously, got a lot of flags called on us this game, but um, I mean, we worked hard today, so uh, you know, it's not on anybody. It's just it's a it's a group. Man, he has been outstanding for the Dallas Cowboys. And you've always been really high on Michael Gallup. i got to give you credit. But what makes him different in what he did today? You know, and he's learned. Last, remember, a week ago, he pushed off. This week here, he was fighting. He just brung his hand down and <laughs> caught the ball. He's learning. This is a big play waiting to happen. Dak should find him more. I mean, I understand throwing to the open guy, but Michael Gallup is up and coming. Watch out. And he did have a fantastic day, 138 yards and that big time touchdown that brought the Cowboys back in it. When we come back, we'll wrap things up and get you set for next week here on Cowboys Game Night. Dallas Cowboys Game Night was presented by AT&T, Reliant, and NRG Company, and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. 38-31, the final score as the Cowboys fall for the second time in 2020. They're now 1-2, and two, and they've had three games, three straight games with a single possession score to conclude things. And Nate, last week, as we take a look at some of the stats from this week, last week the word was resiliency in the yes. win against the Atlanta Falcons. But really the word now is consistency when it comes to the Cowboys on both sides of the football. For the last two weeks, we've come out offensively and special teams and put your defense in a deficit. They have never started a game just settling in on the 25. It's been a short field. We're going to have to come out as an offense when we had a ball, don't turn it over. Special teams, we cannot. If, we, if, we, if the coach asks us to execute a fake punt or a fake field goal, we have to execute it and, and, and give our defense a chance because they are played with their backs against the wall. And really, they've played okay except for the two uh, bad moves our safeties played with this week <laughs> and looking in the backfield and not taking care of their uh, responsibilities. Other than that, our defense has not had a clear shot at starting the game these last two games with open field. You can't make those mistakes, but is that the biggest thing heading into Cleveland Browns week, week four of the season, to try and get back to 500? Chubb is coming. They have another kid. I can't think of his name. Kareem Hunt. They, are, they got two backs that they are running, and they, they put in every run known to man. And on top of that, then you got Baker Mayfield mm -hmm. dropping back on play action pass, and he got some nice uh, receivers. So we're going to have to be locked in no. defensively. No doubt about that. Don't forget about Miles Garrett as well. That's going to do it for Cowboys game night. The Cowboys lose 38-31. Thanks for watching.